We are in Wood County in the center of Wisconsin. This is Marshfield. So John said, meet me at 2442. I said, is that the address? He said, no, it's the engine. The engine to the Sioux line. Found it. <laughs> Good job. You can't miss it. <laughs> not, not at all. Yeah. Let's tell the story of Marshfield. Uh, this old Sioux line locomotive is a good place to start, John, because Marshfield begins as a railroad town. This area had no rivers, no lakes, no obvious natural resources, but it had a great location. Hmm. We're close to the exact geographic center of Wisconsin, so this point was kind of a pretty obvious hub for cross-state railroad lines. The first train arrives back in 1872, and 20 years later, five lines converge on Marshfield, and the town sees 1,000 freight cars and 20 passenger trains coming through every day of the year. Wow. That's why it's still called Hub City. Yeah. And those, the railroads even shape the street system here. And most Wisconsin towns are kind of laid out of this very strict geometric grid. Marshfield's main streets follow the railroad tracks, which go northwest, southeast here. So the whole downtown is kind of cocked at a 45 degree angle from what you'd expect. Did these trains ship anything out of town? That's hard to imagine, John, when you look at all the farmland around yeah. here. But this was once just covered with trees. Lots and lots of logs went out by rail, as well as a lot of lumber and furniture hmm. from a mill owned by a guy named William Upham. And besides the mill, Upham owned a bank, a railroad, a power plant, served as mayor, hmm. and got elected to one term as Wisconsin's governor. So the town might have been named for him as a leading citizen. The story goes that the honor went to another Yankee named John Marsh, who gave 500 books for a public library. So here we are in Marshfield and not up in Mills or yeah. something like that. What did Marshfield do once all the trees were gone? All those clear forests become productive farms, John, and Marshfield becomes kind of the hub of Wisconsin's northern dairy belt. It shipped out a lot of milk and cheese and made a lot of butter and ice cream. Also attracted a lot of industries, some pretty good sized ones, uh, including Weinbrenner Shoes that moves up from Milwaukee back in 1935 and pretty soon they're making a million pairs of work shoes every year. That's great. Still, still in business. Was there anything else going on? Uh, the surprising part to me, John, was back in 1890, a group of Franciscan nuns opened St. Joseph's Hospital here in Marshfield, had a grand total of six beds, <laughs> and served largely lumberjacks and mill hands, but it grew with the town, so addition after addition. One of the physicians on the staff was a German immigrant named Carl Dagey. And in 1916, Dr. Dickey persuaded five other physicians to join him in starting a clinic. The idea was to develop a shared practice with distinct specialties to supplement the primary care of the hospital. So the result was that each of them put in $1,000 and moved into the second floor of an old movie theater in downtown Marshfield. That's the beginning of the Marshfield Clinic. So Marshfield begins as a railroad hub and today it's a hub city for healthcare. And the population? About 19,000. Okay, and the location? We are squarely in the center of Wisconsin, about 40 miles southwest of Wausau, 40 miles northwest of Stevens Point in northern Wood County. We're here in the fall. It's a little chilly, so it's a good bike riding? Wonderful bike riding. Yeah. Yeah, nice city trails. I put about 15 miles on this morning. Perfect. Thanks, John. See you, Jen. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, that is a strange map of the United States. No, it's not. You know what that is? That is half of a cowhide right there. And all of those individual pieces are pieces you can cut. And you use those pieces, guess for what? For shoes. How long has it been in this community? Weinbrenner Shoe Company has been in Marshfield since 1935. What kind of shoes are made here? We make thorough good branded footwear here, out of the box comfort. They're not hard. 75 different styles we run through the factory. We run from Oxfords to, to work boots. Marshfield is all well construction. About 150 steps. 150 up. steps. To About make 150 a steps. Boot. It all starts out with a piece of leather. They'll look at the hide before they start, and they kind of visually have it in their mind. They got to be like good puzzle guys to cut specific sizes, which will end up to be a specific shoe. In a week, we go through about 800 hides. Employee-wise, how many are here? We have 125 employees here in Marshfield. Overall, company-wide, we have around 300 employees. Put it in here, and then you push a button. Help me! It's going to bring it all in. Oh, jeez. 
Okay. So that's what your shoe looks like. That's the first day of a kind of person doing my job, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Insole's the foundation. It's just like your house. Everything's going to be built to the insole. We pull back the leather. We trim it. Put the steel toe on like that. It's going to put a thread through the welt, through the leather, through that white rib. And now that shoe's all together. That's the cork right there. Yep. Wow. It's heat activated, put together, and pressed. Coming up here, just a final inspection. Then it goes down in our packing line. Put lacing in. You polishing? Label and put them in a box. Finally, the part I like best, shopping. Wow, they're handsome. Perfect. They're very different than the shoes I wear for work. And these are work shoes. They are work shoes that everyone likes to wear from work to play. Hello. Thank you so much. <laughs> We're a custom house. That's yeah, all American made right here in Marshfield, Wisconsin. We're at the Marshfield Furniture Company. How long has this company been going? 75 years. Is the line from this year different than the line from last? Yes, we're always changing whatever the style dictates. In many environments, you can only get it the way you see it, because mm -hmm. that's the way it's in inventory. Right. We're going to make it to order for you. A lot of times, the consumer becomes the designer of really? their own furniture. Let's turn around on an order like that. From the time we schedule to the time something comes off the line of six working days. Uh, this is our CAD room. This is first day right here. First day, yeah. yes. Once they have the pattern set, they'll network it. It's networked with our cutter. So when they pull up the one fabric, they'll cut two or three styles at one time. This is our fabric cutter. This will allow you to cut a 15 yard pattern in roughly 15 minutes. Once they're done cutting it, that bundle will uh, travel the little belt into this next room here. They each have their own set of production notes that tells them how it's sewn, where it's sewn. Number of people working here on a daily basis? A little under 100. It's a maze. This is our cushion department. Oh, I love God. who you get to run into. I ran into my first cousin, who works here at Marshfield Furniture. Yep. And I work next to you. And after you get that done, yeah. you do both sides? No. Oh, sorry. I'm new. I'm new here. I know you are. They'll cut the, most of the shape pieces then they'll start with assembling the front of the frame. We use a smaller staple here for a pull string, but you'll put that on, staple it all in place. As it goes down here, they'll start padding up the arms. Then by the time it's going through here, they're putting the fabric on the arms. Wow. Then it heads from here up to inspection. And our philosophy is simple. We want to provide our customers with products and services so our customers come back and not our products. Going to Maryland. Is it break time? <laughs> No, not till noon. Not till noon. We are standing in front of what used to be UW Wood County, a two-year school in the University of Wisconsin system. Just recently, it became University of Wisconsin Stevens Point Marshfield. It's now a four-year school right here in Marshfield. Really important for a community of this size. You can say Marshfield to anybody, and they know that this is here. This has been a part of the community for a long time, and we're proud to be here and be part of that community. Yeah. Yep. Can you talk how many employees are here? Yeah, the Marshfield campus has about 4,000 employees that come and go on a daily basis, so it's a busy place. Are you in these halls every day? I have been with uh, Marshfield Clinic Health System for 30 years now. I actually came up after medical school and did my pediatric residency here. Is an institution of this size for a town of 19,000 people kind of unheard of? It's very unusual. Being in a small community and yet having this wonderful referral hospital is very unique. That's one of the unique things that we are here. It's not for profit and it uh, overall shapes the vision and the mission of what we have for patients is to provide uh, care and do it in an excellent and cost-effective manner. We serve a population of about a million and now we're in the West Building. We are trying to really provide care beyond treatment, mm -hmm. so really taking care of the whole patient. So this is the snoozling room. It's a multi-sensory room. It's for kids to help them um, relax, kind of relieve some of their stress or anxiety. This oh. is very good, I want one of these at home. Oh, okay. This is very impressive. The helipad is where our helicopter, Lifelink 3, lands and brings patients from all over the area. They start from here and they get in the helicopter, they fly out to the referral hospital, get start the initial care there, and then they'll return back to the neonatal ICU with the patient. This is physical therapy. It is. Yeah. You know, so there's a lot of awesome tools and whatnot that our therapists can use to help kids with their rehab. There's two boards up here so we can get the kids to hit the colors with their hands. Does it just keep going? I won! You <laughs> cheater! <laughs>
We're in front of the Charles Apartments, which used to be known as the Hotel Charles, built in 1925. It was the fanciest hotel in all of central Wisconsin. Guess who stayed here? The cast of Gunsmoke, John Dillinger, John Fitzgerald Kennedy, and his wife, Jackie. But my favorite guess who stayed here? Lassie at Hotel Charles. Quite the guest. Left a little present in room 201. <laughs> We walked in and we knew that this was where we were going to be. We're at two and a half cups. Uh, this is Sarah and Mary. You're the half cup? Yes. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> the owner of the half cup, yes. How did this all start? Best friend since fourth grade. So we met wow. in elementary school. Anyway, I got into cake decorating and she likes baking. Pies, cakes. Key lime is great. That's one of my favorites. What are these? Chocolate and white uh, toffee. And usually we have eight to 12 flavors per day of cupcakes alone. If you added up all of your types or flavors, how many would you have? I know we have over 150 flavored cupcakes. Oh, we've got turtle, Oreo, salted caramel, cherry almond, and peanut butter cup. Each flavor has a different, um, like the cherry almond has cherry filling. So each one is different? Yes. So it's not like you can make all chocolate and then let's top them with. Right, the same they, thing, they all, right. That's no. not the way it works. No, it's not. Unfortunately. <laughs> Easier, Mary. It yeah. would, tell me about it. Yes, it would. <laughs> oh, I know she, I just got counted, she counted seven, how That's many cupcakes? Uh, what was it now? 770 cupcakes just for weddings. What? That's just weddings. Just for this week, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Should we leave? One Wait, do you need, one do you need to go? We've been here since one. Part of our attire is your apron. Baker's hat. Beautiful. It's pretty much us. And then we bring in Jody. We're frosting a cupcake, John. OK. Are you ready? Oh, sure. We're going to load some frosting in it. We're making a turtle cupcake. Gentle pressure. Oh, it looks it looks as easy as can like be. Like that. Just in a circle, and then you gradually build up. Look at that, perfect. Just drizzle yeah, a bit? just a nice little drizzle. Perfect, John. And just so you know, I'm on a diet. Right. Will that help? Let's change that. later. <laughs> well, I'm thinking you're out of luck. <laughs> I know. Yeah. In, in, the, in the van, I was like, oh my god. And it's really this street that brought us to Marshfield yeah. because we wanted to live somewhere with central Wisconsin. There's quite a few historical houses here in Marshfield. We moved in with just the two of us, and so now we have three little munchkins running around. Oh, They're you do? Uh, nine, eight, and four. This used to be the library. The library. So there was bookcases on this wall. My wife's a country out. girl, and I'm a city boy, so yeah. we, we found a house in town that had a nice piece of land with it, which really worked out well. Yes. Well, let's talk about this neighborhood. We live in a really historical town, yeah. and it's really cool. And but this this is the doctor right here on the far right. And we've heard it was a 30-bed hospital. So, That's so great to have, isn't it? Oh, yeah. 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 So this is our latest project in our own home. And we're uh, restoring the hardwood floor. Yeah. You know, it's just a house we can call home forever. It's, it's had a lot of owners over the years, but we hope that we're here for the next yeah. 50 years. Let's talk about property downtown. Like, what's your work? We love to buy historical properties and restore them and just bring them back to life. Here's yeah. a building that was sitting there, run down apartments, run down stores. What made it passionate for us is we fall in love with the people that we work with. So they have that passion, that drive, that desire. Desire. They want to create an experience. But it's really the tenants who fill it with life. Right. So how many businesses are you the landlord for? I think we have 87 tenants. Some are commercial and some are residential. 30, 37 yeah. commercial and then the rest are residential. How big is your staff? Like, who, do you have... <laughs> This it's is our entire no. staff right no. here. Yeah. We just kind of turn them loose and say, hey, here's the space. You know, do with it what you want and fulfill your dream. Yeah. And that's the that. definition of working with them, isn't yes. it? Yes, it makes yeah. them feel like we're their partners, too. Right. We want people to enjoy where they live, work, and play. So we're in downtown Marshfield. We're on Central Avenue, which in any other town is called Main Street. And the one thing they do have in common is that Main Street or Central Avenue in Marshfield is the highway through town. Yeah. So sometimes it, it gets really loud. It goes back to 1885. It was Saul Nason. Get that, Nasonville, Saul and Anna. We are Nasonville Dairy. This is Ken Hyman. You are the general manager. I'm the general manager, one of the partners, one of the three brothers, along with our six sons. Are you the first generation here? We are not the first generation. Our father and mother were here before we were. They brought us here in the late 60s. The plant ran 7,500 pounds of milk a day at that point. Now runs 1.5 million pounds of milk a day. They're doing feta right behind yes, us? Yes, they are. We're doing about 17% of all the feta made. Say it again. You make 17% of all of the feta sold in the United States of America comes out of here. Right. This 
pasteurizer is feeding the feta plant. The milk in the other room is coming into here, and what's happening to it is it's actually going into the bassines right there. Now he picks up his first set of knives, and then he'll cut one direction. He'll spin it, and he'll come back and cut the other direction. What's coming out of here? The feta itself. Here it comes. This will all be leveled out, and then as it cures going down here, we'll go into the next room, and then it'll be stacked up and ready to you know, sit until tomorrow. You're a master cheese maker? I'm one of the masters. What really got us here, what got our forefathers here, was the minerals that are in the water. If you look at their minerals in the water here, you'll find that they're the same as you'll find in the Black Forest of Germany or the Swiss Alps. That's what it was all about. Our forefathers couldn't test anything except here. Mm -hmm. But it had good body. It didn't fracture. It actually did the opposite. And this was, this just came off the line, right? Yep. Yep, it hasn't even been packaged yet. Well, I've got to ask you what kind of cheese you make. We make cheddar, Colby, Monterey, Farmer's cheese, pizza cheese, Cuesa Blanca, Cuesa de Fier, Seco, Parm, Romano, Asiago, Fantina, Feta, Caseri, Capilateri, Capilagravi era. We make 20 different flavors of Monterey, as well as making Edam, Gouda, and Munster. Okay, do you mind? Yeah. <laughs> I am in downtown Marshfield. None of these buildings were here until after 1887. There were buildings here, but they were wooden buildings. And in 1887, there was a huge fire that destroyed all of those wooden structures. And they built the next structures out of brick. And they still stand today, downtown Marshfield. Michael, we're in Marshfield, home of the Tigers. We are. Yeah. Talking high school football. Here we go. John, it's a great program. I'm a big fan of Denny Gales. He's the head coach here. Been coaching at the school 26 years. He's a math teacher but he's been the head coach 11 years. Since he's been here, they've gotten to state five times. They've won state twice, and they've taken second three times, which is a big number, I think, to be able to get up to state that many times. Division II football, 1,200 kids in the school, 142 kids in the program from freshman to varsity. Set, go. And Denny's got, he's coaching his son, isn't he? he is. Yeah. Joey is a quarterback here, but he's going to Mankato State on a Division II scholarship. When you talk to Denny about his son, he just lights up. As a father, you're proud as heck. He's a pleasure to coach. He's a, he's a really a good student of the game. Coach, the uh, that new stadium is something else, man. It's a gorgeous place to play, and, and we're really, really happy and really, really lucky to have that in our community. We're really proud to play on it. It's really exciting. Home of the Tigers. Yes, Thanks, Michael. Thanks, John. Good. That's a round barn that was built in 1916. It has 250 stanchions. I know you're thinking, that is a big round barn. Well, it's the world's largest round barn. I know that for two reasons. One, it's in Ripley's, believe it or not. Second, it has a sign on it. This is all they've really ever known. They were rescued straight out of their den. They carried the bears down in backpacks. Can I call the bears somehow? Yeah, we can actually. You ring the bell, they'll come on out. Oh my God, they are huge. Yeah, so Boda is on the left and Muncie's on the right there. To have Kodiak bears in a zoo environment is crazy special. This is Steve Burns and you're the, the zoo manager. It's my job basically to take care of all the needs of the animals. So in 2015, when this opportunity came, mm -hmm. were you surprised that they said, we're gonna send these two to Marshfield? Yeah, I was very excited. People get to see them, learn from them every single day. Where else am I gonna see Kodiak bears in captivity? So two of the three Kodiak bears outside of Kodiak Island reside here at Wildwood Zoo, two inches away from a Kodiak brown bear. That's amazing. The case we made for having the bears here in this exhibit, honestly, I've traveled around, I, I've seen a lot of bear exhibits. This is the best bear the best. exhibit. I see them all the time interacting through the glass with people. That's his spot, he's gonna sniff right there. They lull you into this sense of, oh, they're a big, lazy, slow bear, but when they wanna be fast, they're fast. Oh. <laughs> they really interact with the public. That's good TV. <laughs> So they're all in there? Pretty much all of them. Steve Burns wanted to do a butterfly exhibit. He heard of us and asked if we would do this exhibit. Where do you get the caterpillars? To hunt them. You hunt them? Mm -hmm. Where do you find them? Ditches, fields. One out of every 10 to 20 caterpillars make it in the wild. So that was kind of our incentive mm -hmm. to start bringing them in and kind of helping them out that way. We basically raise them at our house. We just bring the slats to the zoo so people can see a hatch and they can see them flying around. They can see that process. They're actually called, yeah, the super generation. The super generation. Yep. They're born without the <clears throat> hormone, the mating hormone, so they live longer. Mm -hmm. So that's how they're able to survive that long to make it to Mexico. And how many have you brought into the world this year? Uh, 1,500. You won't believe what I have in my hands. It's a newborn. No, I swear. 
this just left its chrysalis today. It's rewarding to see them turn into butterflies, and when they fly away, to me, that's it's a success. That's it. It's a success every time. Have a good trip to Mexico. I like Playa del Carmen. We're yes. right downtown Marshfield in this incredible plaza. If you stroll down our Central Avenue, we have a lot to offer, yeah. and this really just complements. This, this beautiful downtown we have. It's been years in the making that we wanted to bring something downtown, and we would really like to just add more music. I never knew that I was wrong. More entertainment, bring food vendors down. And so the plaza came about because this spot was being underutilized. We try to keep it as busy as we can Thursday through Saturday. We want the downtown to flourish. We sure. want people to come down, shop, and then come down to the plaza and see what yeah. we have going on. After 93. I think it's been a really successful thing for Marshfield. Kitchen table will be 42 in November. How many seats if it's so packed out? Max, we're at about 50. We try to feed them fast. The faster you feed them, the faster they get out. What <laughs> time do those stores open? At 7 a.m. And I bet you have some true customers oh, who yes. show up. Every that... morning, there's yeah. people parked outside if they have their spot. I heard this is the girls' table, though, and the men sit over there. Yes, do you know everybody? Um, I know quite a few people, yeah. Yeah. If I don't know their names, I know what they eat. You do? Yeah. Yeah. What do you usually eat? I have two poached eggs and toast. Has the menu changed much in the 24 yeah. years? You... It no, hasn't. Not much at all. It hasn't. We add a couple things here and there, but. Really good food? Yeah, really good food. Just homemade. You know, homemade. it's hard to beat the soup and the homemade bread. It's made with love. We're going to teach you how to make an omelet. You seem excited. I am. <laughs> You're going to whisk up the eggs. You want them nice and light and fluffy. So we'll give it a swirl, and you can go ahead and pour the eggs right in. And you're just going to pull and tilt. Pull? Yeah. And tilt. And we'll wait to, for steam to start rising up off of it. Oh. That way you know it's cooked underneath. What is this one called? This is our peasant omelet. It's probably our most popular. And then now we're going to go under here, and it's just going to finish off the top of that omelet for you. When it gets cranking and you have 15 omelets up there, are you like, huh? Uh, no, we got a pretty good crew. They always help us out. You have a crew? Yeah, hey, we have a crew. crew. Now when you get here, stop mm -hmm. and just flip the whole pan right over. Oh, the whole pan. Ta-da! You not, made an omelet. Not bad. You may be surprised, but this is my favorite part of the day. Breakfast? <laughs> yes. No eating, no matter what time. <laughs> to the kitchen table? To the kitchen table. Thanks, Thanks so much, table. ladies. Thanks oh, for taking the time with me. Thanks. Appreciate it. We'll see you. To you guys. Thank you. Toast. Thank you, John. How are they arranged? In any order? Oh, yeah. Precise order. Precise. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can start out by showing you something that's different than anything else you'll ever see around here. Okay. That's a uh, octanogon, seven heads in a cranium. It's my bong bird. Bong bird. Yeah, I'll show you what makes that work. You see the hose there? Uh huh. Runs in the shop? Uh huh. My wife's in there blowing. What's going on here? You mean when I started this or something? Yeah. When did you start all this? Well, about uh, 26 years ago, I made a big bird and hung in the tree out there. It got so busy, people started coming. I don't know how they started coming. It exploded on us. Now mm -hmm. we get around 15,000 people every year. Let what? me show you my best piece ever, by far. Ever? Almost looks real, doesn't it? It's so good. <laughs> he can't help himself. It's good. You push all his buttons, you know. <laughs> And these are fun. This is fused glass. You do mostly glass work? Mostly glass, yeah. How do you make a bee? That glass melts at about 1,100 degrees. Now I have molten glass. I'm going to catch that drip, and I wrap it around. So I'm rolling it on here to shape it. If you have to have something matching exactly, you don't want mine. You don't want yours? No, yeah. because it's not, I make each one individually, yeah. and it probably will not be the same. Jurassic Park? Who came up with that? Well, you know, I couldn't call it Jurassic Park. No, you couldn't. Yeah. <laughs> So Jurassic, and uh, you may have noticed there's uh, a rust appears here and there. Yeah. A lot of things that he's done are from the story. And then you know I got it up there, it more resembles a naval dragon. You can tell by the big Audi on his belly. <laughs> when people come out here, they see you? Yeah. They do? Yeah, he okay. lets them. <laughs> he lets them. That's terrible. <laughs> They first called Marshfield Hub City because of the railroads. Now they call it that because of all the activity. Marshfield, great city. We're here with Mayor Bob McManus. How are you, sir? I'm very good, good to thank see you. you. We love your town. Thank you very I have much. I an assignment for you. OK. You have 30 seconds to tell us why Marshfield, Wisconsin is the best place in the world to work, live, and play. And Mayor Bob, you can start now. 
You know, it, we are very fortunate here. We have world-class health care, great employers right now with hundreds of good paying jobs, elementary, middle, and high schools, both public and private, university with an MBA program, as well as trade schools, great places to eat and to shop, and great places where you could just walk around the city at any time, day or night. It is so safe. That's what we have here in Marshfield. It's a great place to live. Perfect, Mayor. Michael, we're in Marshfield, home of the Tigers. We are. Oh, <laughs> oh geez. <laughs> you can be one of the few people in the world that's been looked by a Kodiak bear and lived to tell about sure. it, maybe. I'm never going to watch Yeah, take hand. that home with you. <laughs> I'm nervous! You are? What do you think about me? <laughs> I just want my pants, I think. <laughs> Here we are, John, at the end of the bike trail in Marshfield, Wisconsin. And we wouldn't be here without the uh, support of our underwriters. So, underwriters, thank you so much. Thank you. The Greater Milwaukee Foundation's Ernest C. and Florence M. Shockey Fund. And by the David A. and Nancy E. Putz Fund. The Greater Milwaukee Foundation, inspiring philanthropy, serving donors, and strengthening communities now and for the future. Michaels Corporation, serving the energy, transportation, telecommunications, and utility industries. Michaels, constructing North America's infrastructure for our future. We Energy's Foundation at Wisconsin Public Service Foundation are proud to support public television. Together we create a brighter future for the communities we serve. ATC moves electricity from where it's generated to communities where it's needed. American Transmission Company, helping to keep the lights on, businesses running, and communities strong.